Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Thanks for joining me for the third video in my series of seasonal production data for my Tesla solar panels. My 7.56 kilowatt Tesla solar panel system was installed back in June 2020. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you solar production data for winter 2021, covering the months of January, February, and March. You'll see details on my solar production, home usage, solar offset, precipitation and cloud cover data, including snowfall, aspect creation, and my total electric cost. Let's jump into the data. Starting out with January 2021, again, I have a 7.56 kilowatt system. And to give you a layout of the slide here before we get started, on the left I have my energy usage snapshot. This shows the solar production that I had every day through the month of January in this bar graph on the bottom. Total solar energy production right here where it says solar energy. And the second image is a snapshot of my impact screen and it shows my solar production for the entire month in the yellow bar on the left and my home usage for the month in the blue bar on the right. On the right hand side of the slide I have a table with all of my monthly stats and we're going to run through those right now. So for the month of January 2021 my solar panels produced 465 kilowatt hours of beautiful clean solar energy and that was a 75 percent energy offset. Keep in mind we are in winter time and with winter we have a lower sun angle and shorter amount of daylight so typically the winter time is when we'll see our lowest production of the entire year. My home used 623 kilowatt hours and that's where we get the 75 percent energy offset. So in the month of January my solar panels did not cover the entirety of my home usage and as we move through the rest of the months of 2021, we'll see that energy offset climb. The solar offset for the month of January was 20% self-powered, which is pretty neat. I do not have Powerwall. It's something I want to be adding pretty soon to my home. And when I do add Powerwall, I likely would be able to get this self-powered percentage up much higher. And we drew from the grid 497 kilowatt hours. Mainly those are going to be on days when we had either little sunshine or when snow was covering the panels, as I'll show you below, or at nighttime. My solar panels overproduced 339 kilowatt hours, meaning that's how much energy that went straight back to the grid after my home used what was needed. So the difference between what I drew from the grid and what I pushed from the grid was a negative 158 kilowatt hours. So without any previous kilowatt hour credits from previous months, likely my utility bill would be a little bit higher than what it is for the month because I would be paying for approximately 158 kilowatt hours. The high end production for the month, which is an estimate using the kilowatt hour rule of thumb multiplied by the 31 days of the month. If you want to learn more about the kilowatt hour rule of thumb, check out my July 2020 solar production video. Basically the high end production is if every single day in the month of January is sunny, the maximum amount of electricity my panels would be able to produce would be 703 kilowatt hours and that really takes into consideration the lower sun angle and shorter length of day in the month of January. And on the low side, the system should be able to produce at least 234 kilowatt hours. So I'm right in the middle there with my monthly solar at 465 kilowatt hours. That lets me know that my solar panels are performing as expected. Taking the total monthly solar produced and dividing it by the 31 days gives me an average production per day of 15 kilowatt hours. My highest production day was on January 30th, where I produced 31 kilowatt hours, and my lowest production day was on January 31st, the following day, where we had a snowstorm move in, and we had approximately three inches of new snow that fell during the day, resulting in just 100 watt hours of production for the day. If you want to learn more about how snow impacts solar production, check out the link to my winter production video above. I've got a lot more details on a snowstorm that occurred back in December. Overall for the month here in Central Maryland, we averaged about 70% of normal for precipitation. So we were about 30% below normal. And for average sky cover between sunrise and sunset, we generally had 63% sky cover. So partly to mostly cloudy. My lifetime solar production from July through January, 2021 is 4,772 kilowatt hours. 
I did not end up producing another SREC for the month of January, so my total from when my system was installed is four SRECs and a total of $282. If you want to learn more about SREC production, check out my link to the video above here on SRECs. My utility bill for the month, just $8.50, and I'm showing a breakdown here. Uh, all I was charged was the customer charge of $8.01, and then a universal service charge, and some tax on top of that $8.50. And as I mentioned before, I did have some credits, some rollover credits from previous months, so that was what was used to cover the 158 kilowatt hours that my system underproduced, allowing me to not have to pay for any electricity used and just having to pay that customer charge. Moving on to February 2021, a little bit better production for the month, 484 kilowatt hours now, with my home using a little less than 200 kilowatt hours lower than my January usage. So the solar offset here is looking good. We're actually in the positive here at 108%. So my system produced more solar energy than what my home used for the entire month. Love to see that. So for the month of February, I was a little bit more self-powered, 25% self-powered. I would assume that is due to us gaining more daylight in the month of February. For the overnight hours and on days when the panels were covered in snow or cloudy conditions, I still had to draw about 335 kilowatt hours from the grid, but I ended up pushing back to the grid 373 kilowatt hours. So that's in excess of 38 kilowatt hours that are rolling into a credit for me to be using in following months. The high-end production possibility jumped up a little bit here in February to 1,058 and low-end production of 635. So my production of 484 does fall under the low-end production possibility for the month of February. You can see in the middle of the month here that we had almost a week of low production solar days. So I would say that for the month, we probably ended up producing below normal. So that seems to fit. Average production per day, 17 kilowatt hours. And my highest production day, 40 kilowatt hours for the month of February, which was quite surprising to me. For a wintertime month, I was very surprised to see that high of a number when the highest I produced in the middle of the summer in July 2020 was 45 kilowatt hours. So just five kilowatt hours shy of my peak summertime production. Lowest production day on February 1st. So this is following that snow that came in on January 31st turn the page the next day and we actually picked up an additional inch and a half over night or early morning on the first bring our snow total to four and a half inches for the storm and zero production the panels were covered all day long and we did not produce any solar so that lets you know what kind of impact you could see if your solar panels are covered for one day in a row maybe if they're covered for several days in a row with which for us luckily we didn't have that but under a, a big snowfall more than what i'm showing here about four and a half inches on my back deck i might have to consider that in following winters we'll have uh, a few days in a row possibly if we have heavy snowfall where we won't have any production looking at the percent of normal rainfall for the month february ended up being above normal 167 percent some of this obviously falling as snow. And we did have one day where we had a significant amount of sleet too. And sleet has a high water content. Sunrise to sunset sky cover, 73%. So a little more cloudy in the month of February. That also uh, tying into the lower than what I would expect production for the month of February. Lifetime solar production from July 2020 through February 2021, 5,256 kilowatt hours. And I did end up generating another SREC. This time the price dropped a little bit from $70.50 with my previous SRECs down to $68.50. And that price drop owing to a lowering of Maryland's alternative compliance payment, which here from SREC Trade says is the penalty price that electricity suppliers must pay per SREC if they fail to file the required number of SRECs by the end of each compliance period. The Maryland Solar Alternative Compliance Payment was set at $400 per SREC back in 2014, but has been declining ever since. So you can see that the price dropped from $100 per SREC down to $80 per SREC. So Flood Exchange pays me $71 per SREC, and then there's a $2.50 service fee. So that gives you the $68.50. Taking a look from SREC Trade again, this is how we are expecting these alternative compliance payments 
to be dropping in the next couple of years. So although I'm making about $68 per SREC generated now, as we move through the next couple of years, that payment's gonna be lowering as this alternative compliance payment drops. And in fact, in just a seven short years, that will drop to around $25. A little sad to see that dropping, but you know I'm taking advantage as much as I can right now with the higher prices. So this brings my total since I installed my system up to five SREX sold, a total of $348.50. My utility bill, again, for February was only $8.50. Love to see that really small utility bill. Moving on to March 2021, here we go. Now we're seeing fantastic solar production again with the longer daylight hours and the higher sun angle. 949 kilowatt hours produced. That's more than double what I produced in the entire month of January. My home used 527 kilowatt hours, so that's a solar offset of an incredible 180%. So my solar panels produced almost two times what my home really needed for the month, and all the extra that I generated went into a credit to my account. I had to draw 310 kilowatt hours from the grid. That would be much lower again if I had a power wall, but ended up pushing to the grid 732 kilowatt hours, and that's a difference of 422 kilowatt hours of credit that went into my account to be used at a later time. Similar to my amount of solar produced for the month of March being double that of January, my solar offset was double that of January with 41% self-powered. My high-end production possibility, uh, 1,172 kilowatt hours, and low end production possibility 703 kilowatt hours and with 949 kilowatt hours produced we're uh, up there toward the higher end so i'm um, not concerned at all about the performance of my solar panels they are doing just fine average production per day now up to 30 kilowatt hours per day my average is around 25 as calculated in my 2019 usage before i had my panels installed so it's nice to see that i'm producing more uh, per day than what i really need Highest production day on the 30th of with 44 kilowatt hours. We're getting very close to what I produced in July 2020, and I'm pretty excited uh, moving into the spring coming up. I want to see if I can hit 50 kilowatt hours. That would be uh, certainly worth celebrating. Lowest production day was on the 18th of March, where I only produced 2.4 kilowatt hours. And on that day, we had about a half an inch of rain, and it was overcast all day long. So you can produce even when the sky is covered all day long. It, your production is just greatly reduced. Rainfall a little bit below normal, uh, 92%. And the average sunrise to sunset sky cover, partly cloudy, 50% for the month. So that's good. Total lifetime production now from July 2020 to March 2021 up to 6,205 kilowatt hours. And that allowed me to produce another SREC sold that to flood exchange for $68.50 and that pushed me up to six total SREX produced with my system so far and $417 generated. That's really good because taking a look at the cost of my system, this is from my uh, order solar panels video. Click the link above for more on that video. At the time I produced that video, I ran everyone through the cost of my system and how to order it and it's a great video, it become, it's become one of my more popular videos. But take a look at the solar renewable energy credit line here. Tesla was going to only offer me $378 for me to sign over all of my SRECs. And I'm glad that I passed on that because now, just nine months in of ownership, I've already made more money than what Tesla would have offered me. Now that has changed because I just re-ran pricing uh, for a system if I would have bought it today. and. Tesla is now offering $1,387 for SREX. So that's going to take me approximately two years to make more than Tesla's offering me for those SREX. And my utility bill, again, just $8.50. Well, that does it for March 2021, guys. Thank you for watching again. If you want to see my other seasonal production video, check out my summer and auto production videos. You can find those under my solar playlist. I'll link that here above. And looking forward to sharing with you guys my spring production video about three months from now and eventually my one-year production data. 
which I'll end up producing right around mid-summer. If you really like this information, make sure you hit that subscribe button because 95% of you are not subscribed and subscribing really helps my channel out. In addition to subscribing, hit that like button and leave me a comment if you have any questions. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.